Hey, this is Tyler, Theater Design Company. So this video is going to do a couple different things. One, this is going to be a client video. This will be a video we send to clients uh, before we get out to their house to set up their own network gear. And uh, obviously, we're recommending them buy their own cable modem. We've uh, linked one that we've used on numerous jobs below. It's the RS SB8200. It's an Amazon link. And a quick note on that, if you go to Amazon and look at that link, it's had 17,000 some purchases and reviews. So it's obviously a very well bought uh, and used modem. Uh, reason we're having customers buy their own cable modem nowadays is Comcast usually doesn't even send a tech out. They're sending a self-install kit anyway. So if you're gonna install Comcast equipment and pay their fee, uh, you know, to rent it, why don't you just buy your own, and save that money? Um, so going through the kind of the five reasons that I would buy my own cable modem or use that is uh, one, obviously cost savings. Uh, Comcast cable modem rental, $15 a month. Factor that by a year, it's about $180, uh, plus taxes and everything else on that, where you can buy your own cable modem. For example, the one below is less than $140. So first year, you're saving $40, second year, $180, and so on. The number two reasons to buy your own modem is basically going to be better performance. So if you have your own equipment, obviously there's a cost involved with that, so you're going to want to factor that in. But by using your own network Wi-Fi router and system, uh, for example, if you have a small home, maybe the XFi router that you get from Comcast works, but if you get a larger home or a Rambler, maybe heavy internet users, you're going to want to have your own equipment. So by doing this, we're, we have the ability or you have the ability to send you know out the signal to access points, whether they're PoE ceiling mount access points or wired access points. The other option is you have the ability to set up some VPNs. Maybe your work requires that, port forwarding for cameras and so on. So overall, the second reason is just going to be better performance. Uh, third kind of goes hand in hand with number two just control over your home own hardware so if you have a xfinity router slash modem for example and you put that even you do the right thing and put it in bridge mode and set up all your port forwarding if you call comcast or comcast has an issue in the neighborhood they can reset that modem at any time which loses your bridge mode opens back up their wi-fi causes all sorts of issues we see it all the time so having the control over your own hardware is a huge bonus including login you can set up the password use your own apps so you have all those features so that'd be reason basically number two and three. So number four may even trump the uh, savings of having your own modem. It's going to be security. So for example, you know, Comcast X5, they're going to update security uh, on a global scale where companies like Eero, Ubiquity, they're going to introduce firmware and security plugins much, much faster than a, a big nationwide company like that. So security is going to be a huge issue on things. Uh, having your own gear, you can check that. You can also select if you want to introduce a security update where Comcast is just going to force the issue. So that would be number four is security. So number five is just going to kind of recap the long-term investment, owning your own modem. Um, over time, you're just going to save money. There's no question about that. And then jumping into that, number five is basically going to be if you own your own modem, you know, you're, you're staying up on technology. If you want to get a new modem, you can get one of those from uh Amazon or, you know, even a local store at any time where, you know, an ISP, Comcast, you know, they're going to introduce one every other year, every two years. So you're staying on top of technology with your own modem. Uh, and if it fails, you have the ability to get one of those. You can go on Amazon. I mean, heck, you might even be able to get one in just a couple hours if it fails, where if a uh, Comcast modem fails one, you're going to be on the phone with them for hours and then they're going to have to send you one. So you're, you know, you're looking three or four days without internet. Uh, and so that's number five. Last part of this video, I'm actually going to go through step-by-step -step on installing one of these uh, RS SB8200s. Step-by-step uh, -step is what I mean by that. I'm just going to go through screenshots of it and uh, show you how these things are set up. And I think that'll help you guys out, especially on the homeowner side of things. They can uh, follow these steps and get up and running before we get out to their home. And that way their internet's active and we can drop in our own network gear and save them some money and some time and uh, get these things going. All right. Thanks again. Okay, so next steps after you subscribe are going to be setting up your RS SB8200. What I've done here is a step-by-step -step setting on this, so we'll start with step one now. So step one, you're going to want to log in to your Xfinity app. You have to do this setup by your app, so you need to have your login and password when you set up your Xfinity account. Step number two, you're going to want to press the activate XFi gateway or modem. In this case, you're activating a modem. And also at this time, you should have already connected 
your new RS8200 to the wall using the coax cable and have it powered up. Once powered, you'll start to see the lights blink. The top light is your power. The second and third light are your send receive from Comcast service. Generally, these will blink up to five minutes. I usually like to wait a good five minutes before entering the MAC address on the next step. So this step, we're now gonna enter the MAC address. That can be found on the bottom of the RSSB8200 as shown here. You'll go ahead and enter the MAC address and then click the next step. Now that you've entered your MAC address and click next, it should prompt you to activate your service. You're gonna to wanna to click on that. At this point, it takes about five minutes for Comcast to establish a connection. You should see the bottom green internet icon light light up. And then after that lights up, you now can plug your network cable into port one or two and you're ready to have internet. Thanks a lot. Thanks for subscribing.